Hi everyone, welcome to this week's episode of the TV and Film Review Podcast. Joining me today, we've got... Captain Yesterday. Hello, hello. And we've got uh, our newest member of the film team. Clubberella! Yeah, that's me. Hope third, third time's a charm, hopefully. Yep. <laughs> we've, uh, <laughs> we've had some problems with uh, uh, a few podcasts in the last couple of weeks, so this is Ricky's official debut, hopefully. Yay, yay, mate. <laughs> yeah. And as usual, I'm your host. Super King, the best one of the three. Um, so as usual, we'll uh, we'll start off with what we've been watching. Um, after that, we'll be talking about some iconic TV intros. Um, we had this idea during the week, and we thought we'd we'd share some of our our thoughts on it with you. Um, and something similar with the kind of the best movie scenes that we. That we remember, like that are linked with certain movies. I'm going to cut that out. That sounded really shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we'll start out. Um, Ricky, since this is your official debut and in inverted commas, uh, do you fancy yep. uh, starting with what you've been watching this week? Um, yeah, uh, I watched the first part of the Community finale, which uh, looked kind of interesting. It's I don't know, like their finales always have been kind of weird like the third one felt kind of like they knew that they weren't going to get another season so they kind of wrapped everything up mm-hmm. then the fourth one kind of even though it kind of was wrapped up you could see where they were going to go with the next one like how they could kind of get out of it and this one seems like you know they can get out of it but at the same time it seems like a real kind of finale kind of coming up basically oh um yeah so but apparently they're they're more than likely going to get a sixth season. I was going to say, have they not already been renewed for a sixth season? No, no not yet. No, no. It's, no, it's they're always the last minute. Right. Every year, it's always the last minute kind of. It's just looking on Twitter and everyone going like, okay, so they're out, they're out of like the thing, they're out of like the meetings now. Now, now's the the announcement. Um, but yeah, um, I've read good things like it's more than likely going to get the sixth season, which. The previous years, it kind of just hasn't had any anything said about another season. So yeah, mm-hmm. watching that, um, watched the latest from Dust Till Dawn on Netflix, which is getting good now because they're finally getting to the titty twister, basically. Yeah, I, uh, I haven't uh, haven't had a chance to see it yet. Is it definitely worth watching? Yeah, I think it is. It's it's really slow compared, like obviously compared to the film, like. We're five episodes in, and we're only getting to the Titty Twister. It's a they've changed it quite a bit. Like it's not really vamp. They're, they're still vampires, but they're more snake-like, and it's mm. all about a blood cult and stuff like that. It's quite interesting. Um, the two guys who are like the Gecko Brothers are really quite good. Um, yeah, and it's got Robert Patrick in, so you know Terminator Two. You can never go wrong. Oh, of course. <laughs> And um, I think that is it. I've just been like catching up with Dead Like Me on Netflix as well, um, like the first two seasons. So that's it, really. Nothing new. Okay. Um, I'm gonna have a wee change. I'm gonna go next. You can you can go you can go last. Liam. <laughs> I'm always last. <laughs> um, uh, so this week was the season finale of Justified. I know, I'm really sorry, it sounds like every time that I'm on I talk about Justified. Yeah, I don't um, even know you've watched promise... it, you've kept it quiet. <laughs> <laughs> um, I promise that I have went through weeks without talking about it and they've just got deleted. Not through my fault, I'm, I'm not <laughs> trying to. Um, but the season finale was absolutely superb. Um, I, I had a wee discussion with uh, one of my friends uh, on the site the other day in the comments section of the Power Rankings article that I did. Uh, and it ranked Justified... I'm not going to spoil it actually. You can go and read it. I'll put it in the link dump. Um, but yeah, he wasn't. He thought that um, season five was one of the the lesser seasons. I am the total opposite. I thought it was one of the best. Uh, I thought the villains were great. Uh, I thought it wrapped up really well as well. And I'm I'm interested to see where it goes next season. Next season should be the the last ever. 
Um, but they've kind of this felt like a well, in some sense, it felt like a kind of summed up version. Um, and then there's the big kind of announcement at the end uh, that sets up season six. Um, but it was really they, they do the finale really well. Uh, always always leave with goosebumps from it. Um, I also took a couple of recommendations. Um, this was actually from a couple of weeks ago that I'd watched these, but every podcast I've done since has been lost, so I can talk about them now. Um, <laughs> Liam, you mentioned that a few weeks ago. Uh, review with Forrest McNeil? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I watched it. Um, you, you really sold me on it. It sounded like an awesome idea. And it was it is an awesome idea, but I didn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I just didn't like the style of comedy that it was. Um I watched the first two episodes, and I don't know. There was funny bits, but the layout of it wasn't. It was like too cheesy, too um, kind of. It felt like they were trying to help, well, not trying. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how to put it. Like uh, they were just going full on, take the piss with the with that style of show. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I, I really liked the first episode, and then it's kind of. From that one, hilarious. And then from then on, I've like there's been bits that've been funny and bits that haven't been. But then I think it's like the third or fourth one when like one of the reviews is what it's like to get a divorce. And then from right. then on, it's kind of like like a running theme through like all the other reviews from then on are all like kind of coming from that. So it's not like it gets a storyline as such, but right. they kind of tie it all into that because he obviously gets divorced. And then it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Everything else, all the other reviews kind of tie into what's happening with his wife and his bump into his ex-wife and all that. So. <laughs> um, so it kind of, rather kind of being like a random like, sketch, it kind of gets a bit of a story. But uh, yeah, it's not it's not for everybody. So if you don't like it. I'm not going to force you. So you must watch it. But I can I, I can I agree with what you're saying on some things. Yeah. See, even even when you're talking about it just now, I, I really I, I want it to be good. <laughs> like that sounds like so fucking funny. But uh, it just it wasn't there. It, it just didn't have the substance to back it up. Yeah. I, I was good yeah. at that. I was going to say this week, it's like, how, what it's like to be in an orgy. <laughs> I just thought what's like. <laughs> Nicholas says orgy, it's just hilarious. Uh, the other thing was uh, a Dan Harmon series that Robbie had actually told me about. And this was ages ago, this was last year that he told me about this. Rick and, Rick Rick and, and Morty, Morty, that's the one. Um, and that was another one that sounded uh, okay. Robbie's good at selling things as well. Um, he'll talk something up to you and it's it sounds like the best thing ever. We should all just pack this uh, TV and film review thing in, uh, fill it in, <laughs> just just go to marketing. We'd be well better at that. <laughs> um, or more so you would. I wouldn't. I suck at selling things. Um, but yeah, I gave Rick and Morty a wee go and it was too weird for me. It was very, very in your face. Um, like mm. all of Dan Harmon's weirdness <laughs> and yeah. every single scene of it. Um, again, some of it was really good. Some of it was just too kind of cringy for me. I, I think you've watched it, Ricky. I've watched. Uh, I only watched the first episode, if I'm perfectly yeah. honest, and it was all right, but I, it wasn't enough to keep me going on to the rest of the show. No, I, um, felt, I, felt, uh, so, yeah. I felt the same. I, I, I forced a little bit of the second episode, and it was just more of the same. So hmm. um, maybe it's just one of those things you have to wait to finish and just power through it, as opposed to waiting week by week. And I don't know. Yeah, maybe uh, if Robbie comes back to me after he listens to this. Which uh, you better be listening to this, Robbie. <laughs> um, if he comes back to me after uh, he listens and says it gets better, then I'll I'll give it another go. But as things stand, nah. Um, and the last thing, which I imagine you'll be talking about as well, Liam, um, Game of Thrones. Oh yes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I thought you'd bring it up. <laughs> I really wanted. Uh, well, we were going. To, the plan was to do the spoiler cast this week, um, and this might be a good time to have a surprise announcement. Surprise! We've got a spoiler cast coming up next week uh, on Game of Thrones. Um, everyone's a Game of Thrones fan. If you're not, you have to be. You have to go and watch it, and you will be. Um, and we'll just be basically uh, talking about the episodes in detail of what we liked about it, what we didn't like about it, where we think it's going to go, where Liam's going to tell us it's not going to go, <laughs> <laughs> and. Uh, yeah, just all the all the fun stuff that you talk about, kind of the water cooler moments, if you will. Um, but yeah, I thought the the first episode was great. 
all the episodes are great, to be honest. There's not one that leaves you disappointed, but uh, it was it was a great first episode for a season. It made you want more, didn't it? Oh yeah, definitely. I think it's going to set it up what's going to happen and kind of going yeah. back to what happened before as well. Yeah, no, it was really good. Um, really good we, we won't go into too many spoilers here, but uh, I love the bit with the Hound. Him and uh, Arya's Arya, scene. yeah. Um, I always forget her name. She's like my favourite character as well. <laughs> um, their their uh, little section of the story was just amazing. That, that um, the fight scene is just it's one of the best in the series. Uh, the series, I think. Um, I liked. Was... Um, I liked. Ob- I think it's Obedian Martel, the new guy, the red viper that kind of came in from the Martels. That he was quite good. Uh, who was that? The it's the guy that um, Tyrion went to meet at the... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, he was really cool, though. Um, you, you'll need to give me his name because I, I wrote it down for the spoiler cast agenda and I, I didn't know how to pronounce his name. I think it's Obedian. Obedian? Yeah, I, I'd seen it... Uh, sorry, I'd seen it spelled, but I didn't know how to pronounce it. Yeah. Um, it's like... The, the spelling they have for it is like Q-U-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-N. So, I don't know, I don't know how that works. <laughs> Go on. Um, Go on. That's, a, that's, that's obviously his name. <laughs> um, yeah, go and watch Game of Thrones if you haven't already. Ricky, that means you as well. Yeah, exactly. Ricky. Yeah, yeah, I guess. <laughs> I guess. Hang your head in shame. That's terrible. Um, <laughs> so, it's your turn now, Liam. Okay, um, well. What have you been watching? Apart from Game, Game of Thrones. Thrones. Um, I, don't, I don't know if you've seen this week's Stu at the Mindy Project. Um... I can't remember if I've seen this week because remember I'd watched like half of the. No, I haven't watched it yet because oh. it was it was a double episode this week as well, wasn't it? It was. Oh, I yeah, I, 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 I was going to ask about that. It's, it's a bit of a spoiler. I don't. I don't really know if I want to um, talk about it. I might ruin it for you. Nah, um, I can go for it. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. Well, obviously, I was a bit annoyed with the Mindy project this week because obviously they did the whole thing of Danny and Mindy getting together. Mm-hmm. Um, I was quite a big fan of them, so I was quite happy they got together. And then in the first one of this week, they break up. Oh. Which is just annoying, because it, it just annoys me that they build up this thing and they break up. And then the very next episode, Danny's trying to get with him from Happy Endings' sister. And you're just like, like, you know, ah. he's meant to be in love with Mindy and has been for so long. And then it's like within an episode. Yeah. He's like, he's Blinking trying to get with something else. It annoys me. <laughs> I don't know whether they meant to have a break between those episodes originally, but obviously because of yeah, what's happened, they off, haven't, yeah. I don't know. But I was, it, it left me quite angry. I feel like I'm getting like one of these shippers, like the rain people and all that, and getting angry about couples. But, yeah, I was just like, you know, don't build something up to then tear it down within like a couple of episodes. I think we could campaign to get a, a split timeline, like How I Met Your Mother. Maybe <laughs> the extra of an alternative timeline. Where everyone wears just paper goatees. Um, yeah, I can imagine that's a, a bit of an anticlimax um, for it. But... Oh, that was uh, something you brought up there. Um, what do you make of the guy from Happy Endings in it? He's alright. To begin with, I thought he was a bit annoying, but yeah, I think the past few episodes, because he's been the one that's kind of known about Danny and Mindy, he's been quite good, but yeah, yeah. I think the problem with the Mindy project is they've got all these characters that really, apart from Mandy and Danny, my dad just say Mandy, Mindy and Danny <laughs> and uh, Morgan, the rest of them, they don't really know what to do with them. Like, the two receptionists, yeah. Don't do it. They have like one line an episode. I mean, to get paid and just have one line an episode must be a pretty good job. But <laughs> it seems a bit pointless. So at least he's getting a bit of stuff to do. But um, he's alright. What about you? Do you find what do you think about him? Yeah, I really like him. I think. Uh, I actually think all the happy endings cast have went on to uh, on to do some really good things and have decent roles. Um, apart from Alicia Silverstone, funnily enough. She's not in anything now. Uh, Alicia, Alicia, Alicia Cuthbert. Oh, yeah, Alicia sorry, Cuthbert. Alicia Silverstone, Jesus Christ. Yeah, it was like Silverstone. <laughs> 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 she um, <laughs> She's got yeah, like, um, isn't she like the lead? She's going to be lead to one of these new comedy pilots coming up. Her yeah, I think you're right. Character. And it was one that sounded absolutely from. terrible. Probably. Um, wasn't it? Yeah, because um, <laughs> Penny, the woman who played Penny, she's on a pilot as well. Oh yeah, he's, he's from the guy that did Happy Endings, I think. Who she's uh, engaged yes. to, so it's, uh, why she keeps it's a bit fun. funny how that works. <laughs> <isn't it? laughs> um, but yeah, I think I think he's uh, 
he's done pretty well in Mindy Project. I, re- I really like his character, especially at the end of last season. Oh, no, not the end of last season, the before the mid-season break for, for this season, uh, when they were doing the pool party and all that stuff. Oh, yeah. Um, it was really good in those episodes. Um, I thought that's where they kind of came out of his shell a little bit. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's shaping up to be an okay season. Um, but I'm going to be a bit annoyed if they don't resolve the uh, Danny Mindy thing. Do you think that's maybe just been a last minute change because they've yeah. did they get renewed? Yeah. Yeah, I think obviously it was in the last podcast, which yeah. I won't be aired. But obviously we talked about it last week. How I think it was last week. How it's also got renewed, and I think I thought that was kind of the end game, and because they maybe didn't think they were going to get renewed, so that's why they got them together. And now that they have, they've maybe gone, oh, let's break them up and make it last a little bit longer. I don't know, but still, it's a bit annoying. Personally. Maybe that's why they had the mid-season break. Maybe it was. Maybe it was. Yeah. Um, what else? Um, again, kind of because of the lost podcast from last week. Um, Agents of Shield. Um, when I saw Captain America two last weekend. Oh week. yeah, I remember you saying. And obviously, this week's Agents of Shield kind of followed on from it, so they kind of obviously kind of tie in. Very good episode. It's kind of been a bit middling. The, the season overall has been a bit iffy, to be fair. But the this this episode was really good. I was kind of followed on for what kind of happened in the movie, and it's kind of setting up what's going to happen the rest of the season. I thought it was a really strong episode. And if we're going to be doing the power rank, the kind of TV power rankings on the website for this week, it's going to be quite high, I think, in my my list. So it was a very oh. good episode. I'll tell you what, there was a lot of people kicking off on uh, Twitter that it wasn't in um, the power rankings this week. There was, yeah, there was well, a lot, a lot of uproar about uh, <laughs> Agents of Shield missing out. Yeah, I think. Because because it's had such a, you know, everyone had such high hopes and it hasn't reached at the start and it didn't quite get there. Quite a lot of people have rent off for the past few episodes. Uh, have been really good, and um, I think because they they've maybe now kind of worked out what they can, they're kind of where they're kind of going with the storyline or whatever. So mm-hmm. it's been really good. But it's had the last couple of pretty strong episodes. So I can maybe understand, you know, going off the past couple of episodes, maybe people thought it should have been in there, but. Um, I, Agents of Shield is one of those things they didn't really know where they were going, no. right? Like I've only got to the mid-season finale, but it's quite interesting because like they they didn't really know what was going to happen in any of the films, so they're kind of writing the show on the seat of their pants, and then Captain America came out, and they were like, "Oh, okay, wherever we were going, we have to completely yeah. change it now." Yeah, totally. Um, I think if they get like a second season, it's one of those ones where they'll they'll kind of. No, they would have learnt from all the previous mistakes of where they have like of writing the show a bit better. Yeah. Because it just started off was essentially well when I first started watching it I was really hyped for it obviously because it was like a Joss Whedon thing and then like after the first episode I realised that I didn't remember what actually happened apart from oh him from Angels in it oh look it's him from Firefly oh there's something about Captain America and. Like literally, it was just like a fanboy, fanboy kind of reaction to the episode as a whole, and I just had to stop watching it as as like a superhero thing or something from Joss Whedon to actually enjoy it because it kind of, in those respects, it kind of was letting me down. Yeah. But you know, it's got. I've heard it's got better. Um, hopefully, when I catch up, I'll be excited. Uh, yeah, I think like you said to begin with, it was very kind of standalone. Kind of a yeah. case of the week type thing, which obviously wasn't great mm. and stuff. But now they've they've kind of got into a kind of mythology and kind of ongoing thing, so it's the writing mm. seems to be a bit better. But I, I agree. I think at the start they didn't quite know what they were doing. They kind of didn't really have much plan of where they're going. But now because of the Captain America stuff and everything else, they've maybe got a better idea of where they're headed. So it's kind of tighten things up a bit. But we shall see. If it gets, I hope it. Well, I don't know if I hope it gets the second season. If it does, I'll be quite happy to watch it. Um, but we'll see how it. I honestly don't think there's a there's going to be any problem about it getting the second season. I think. Well, no, I suppose like, we can use it to tie into all the movies. I yeah, think. and it's it's all run by the same company. Yeah, like, it's true. So. Yeah, so let's just say that that's what I've been watching because I can't remember the other thing I was going. To... Oh, it was okay, totally your wife. wife because I thought David was going to be on it. Ah, right, he's okay. he's not, so it's a bit pointless talking about it. Uh, yeah, we had a couple of losers and we don't watch it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so that's what I've been watching this week. Um. Just want to give a wee shout out as well. Mad Men st- actually starts back tonight uh, for its is it fifth season, sixth season. Isn't it? Um, I thought it was seventh. Seventh, I think. Yeah. The final one. Uh, final season. Oh well. Oh yeah, so it is. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that that starts back tonight, um, which is why we're not talking about it 
Um, well, none of us have been watching it, <laughs> but by the time the podcast comes out, it will have aired, and I'm sure we loved it. Um, I don't know, I've never watched it, so I can't say. Yeah, same, oh, really? actually. I thought, I thought, well, did you guys watch Mad Men? <laughs> no, no. Oh, well, I, I, I will have watched it and loved it then. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's very slow, but it's, it's good. It's good once you get a bit invested in it. Um, and I thought there was something else starting back this week as well, actually. Um, well, we'll just oh, Cal- Californication. Californication starts back tonight as well. Is that not the final one of them, too? Also for it, yeah. Yep, I think so. Yeah, it's his final season, yeah. yeah. So I'm going to have plenty of spots to fill next year for my for my TV schedule. Oh well, David, um, what's his second name? David Dukovny? He's already. I, I thought you yeah. were going to say David McGregor. <laughs> I'm like, right. <laughs> right. He might have been picked up too. Well, he signed on for a new series on NBC, apparently. So oh. he'll still be on your TV screen. Is it uh, Aquarius, isn't it? Yeah, something about him hunting Charles Manson. And that, yeah. that sounds cool. So um, I, I would I would have quite liked to see him getting into Girls. Girls is just the the girls version of Californication, I think. That, that's it's the same kind of. It's not as funny, but it's uh, that kind of same tone, like the really well written, quite snappy, and quite quite clever, you know. Um, but yeah, I'll watch uh, David Duchovny chasing Charles Manson. <laughs> so on to our first major topic Liam, uh, we were talking about it during the week Iconic TV intros Yes Yeah. Um, obviously with uh, Game of Thrones coming back yes. Spoiler for the rest of the content That's <laughs> going to be one of them um, It kind of it got put into It was your idea, I'll, I'll give you full credit for it um, That it's one of those intros that you just can't stop thinking about once you once you've seen it. It's it's stuck there for good. Yeah, well, I was annoying the annoying the other half by humming it for like two days after watching Game of Thrones, <laughs> so it's stuck in my head for days. That's just it. I, I've I've been doing it like occasionally during the the year that it's not been on. <laughs> <laughs> I've not even went back to watch it, and it's uh, it's still stuck in my head. So, what other kind of uh, TV shows intros? Are as as catchy as Game of Thrones, and why are they? Why are they so catchy? Catch. I I well I like the House of Cards one as well. I wouldn't say it was necessarily catchy, but again, I kind of find myself humming it. Like even so this is a while ago since I've watched it, but even like you know sitting at my desk at work, you know, typing away, and I find myself humming the House of Cards theme tune, which is <laughs> kind of it. And I liked the Mindy project. I don't. I'm quite disappointed they cut it. I know an earlier podcast, David, you go, me, and uh, that, that, that was uh, that it. was our first ever podcast. I think. I think it was. <laughs> um, and and David was saying how much he hated it, but I I really liked it. I'm quite glad they cut it. So it was quite quite a catchy catchy theme tune. Um, I, I like the Mindy project as well. Um, yeah. I, I like the way it's uh, the kind of TV intros done as well. The kind of shifting tiles and the the comic book panel yeah, style. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think that's pretty cool. It's pretty well done. Yeah. And the True Blood one as well. I've not watched it. I presume it's still the same one. Oh, I love that song. That is a good song. Jace Everett. That's what it's called. Uh, that's the guy who sings it. Jace Everett, and it's called Bad Things. Great track. Actually, that, that was one of the first tracks that I bought on iTunes. I actually was... Uh, I was going to say suck that out. <laughs> <laughs> What? Uh, seek, seek that out. <laughs> <laughs> um, just because I loved uh, that True Blood intro so much. Um, I, I don't remember the the video portion of it though. It's just the song. It's the same with me. Like this is going to sound really weird, but as soon as you guys um, brought this up, like iconic kind of TV intros, the first thing I thought of was Ducktales. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and, now and like literally any time I hear the word Ducktales, as soon as it comes, in, yeah, literally I I've got I've got like the theme tune in my head now, and it's not gonna go away for about another two hours because it's just such a good theme tune. It's just so good. That, that, that's a, that's one of those ones that's just it's in everyone's head from their childhood. And like you say, yeah. whenever you hear Ducktales, you automatically go, yeah. uh, which is going to be the intro and the outro this week, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, just and, um, me, me as the outro going, woohoo! 
And um, I vaguely remember Quantum Leap, like, it wasn't, like, really a, a theme song or anything. It was just, like, a voiceover, but, like, a, it just gave you the basic gist of the whole story because it was, because every episode was, like, standalone, but with that kind of little thread going through the whole thing. But it would, it was perfect setup. And it would tell you exactly what, like, if you had to just, if you were just watching, like, the middle of the second season, you'd know where you were as soon as you, like, as soon as the intro had finished. It was, like, some woman giving a voiceover about Sam Beckett, like, putting right what once went wrong. I remember that bit so vividly, because I used to watch it all the time when I was younger. Loved it, Quantum Leap. I can't say I've ever seen Quantum Leap. Oh, it's so good. I've not seen it. It's no. Oh, it's, I don't, I don't think it's so. good. I don't oh. remember the theme tune. But... <laughs> no, it was it wasn't a theme tune. Well, was I don't remember the intro. I sorry. Um, <laughs> see, there, I think there are a lot of new ones. I think this is a a very recent thing. Um, where every great show has to have a great theme tune to go with it. Um, I'm looking at my my list of shows that I watch. Um, Game of Thrones, amazing. Um, even with the wee map, uh, the wee kind of zoom over. Yeah, uh, the the map of the world. Uh, was it Westeros? Yes, Easteros. Yeah. Westeros. East Stirlingshire. Um, True Detective. That that's that, that's another oh, one. Yeah. Went went on the iTunes just to buy that song. It was so good. Um, oh, sorry. <laughs> no, not not that song. <laughs> um, that, um, I'll I'll link that into the link dump as well. Um, I can't remember the name of it off top of my head I think it's the Handsome Family something like that it's called uh, yeah. the band um, Justified as well I, I, it's like a kind of country rap song it's like uh, I'm not going to sing it I'm, I'm just going to embarrass Hillbilly myself rap. I think you should country rap sounds interesting <laughs> Hillbilly rap yeah it's like uh, on a lonely road would it take me home trying to uh, say some, some shit like that <laughs> I'll uh, I'll put the actual video in. <laughs> literally just sounded like a limp biscuit song. <laughs> <laughs> um, suits as well, Greenback Boogie, great tune. Uh, I think it's I'm a Robot that sings that one. Um, and that that's another one. It's kind of that comic book style, like um, Mindy Project, kind of sliding panels over and everything, showing bits of the characters. Um, it's it's quite well done. What other ones? I mean, do you miss like theme tunes? Because a lot of obviously you've mentioned, I think mostly seems to be cable shows now have the kind of theme tunes. Mm. But other like ones on Fox and all that, they seem to just have like like Grey's Anatomy, for example, used to have a theme like a wee kind of that. Yeah. But it's like the first. And now it's, it's the first thing to go. Yeah. It's the first thing to go when they're going over time. Yeah. I think it ever it started ever since like like Lost came into effect and Lost opening theme was just like that sound effect and title card which took only like five seconds ten seconds and everyone started to go that way really didn't they did, for a did. bit did lost ever have a theme tune no no it was just that hum ah, and yeah. then and, and then the going into the lost that was one of the ones that was uh i thought was really freaky and i don't know why i, I thought it was just really ominous and really mm. just that thing <laughs> um uh, I'm totally embarrassed myself here. <laughs> uh, I know, <laughs> master of it. Uh, just like thank, the, thank just like the guy in police. <laughs> just like the guy in police academy. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's uncanny. Uh, they've got to put one of those guys in uh, Brooklyn Nine Nine. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I mean, Brooklyn Nine Nine is quite good. It's like it's quite. Uh, oh, Parks and Rec as well. I kind of like Parks yes. and Rec. It kind of Parks and Rec. I don't know perks you up. Perks you up as soon as you hear it. It's great. Um, community as well. I, yeah. I like the community tune, uh, and I like the wee kind of paper. What do you call those things? Fortune teller things. Cutie catches or something like that. Which I know which one you're talking uh, about. South like. Park reference. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, another one I've just seen there. Elementary. Probably the best video. The, the best uh, video one that I can think of just now. But then that gets cut a lot as well, yeah. doesn't it? To make time. Oh, does it? Yeah. I've not, I've I not think noticed. it does, yeah. yeah. Um, but I like all the wee kind of elaborate trap things. It's yeah. it's very it's a very Sherlock Holmes thing for some reason. Yeah. Um, or just the giant game of mouse trap. <laughs> yeah, kind of. <laughs> um, but the the one when Liam told me about this that I thought of was Mad Men. 
uh, just talking about it coming back and that whole I mean you get everyone theorising that that's how it's going to finish not well I don't know if I want to spoil it for you if you haven't watched that no I'm not no, I'm well, it's not. It's not really. Not like, it's the not silhouette happens. man kind of running. <coughs> yeah, but, yeah. Well, it's a uh, like a silhouette f- jumping off a building, basically, and falling through all these different uh, like ad banners and things like that. Okay. Um, and it's got the the creepy kind of ominous tune again. A lot of people are theorising that that's going to be how it ends. That uh, Draper's going to going to top himself by jumping off a building. Oh, okay. Um, something to look forward to. Which. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, but that that's one of the another one of the best video ones for me, um, and it's very it's, it fits very well with the rest of the show. Hmm. Um, but Sopranos had a good theme tune as well. Uh, oh yeah, that was uh, Alabama Three. Yeah, yeah, uh, absolutely. It, uh, the icons in Glasgow they play here like every three months. Okay. <laughs> um, I, I have to go and catch one of the shows and see if they see if they don't play the Sopranos theme tune. You know that's going to be the last song that they play. I, I would imagine so every <laughs> single time. They probably, probably play like three versions of it. Yeah. Um, I, they're actually a decent band, to be fair, to Alabama 3. Um, they do a great cover of The Eagles Hotel California. Um, I feel bad talking about so much music on this, uh, this uh, TV and film review <laughs> podcast. Um, but do you think it's a, a very new thing? All of them making sure that all the great shows have got a great theme tune. Or a great opening. I think it's more play like what Ricky was saying, like the Lost thing. Maybe that's you know people see Lost doing that, so then they kind of do the same thing. Maybe people are seeing like you know True Blood and Mad Men and all that having really good intros, so they make sure that they've got a good intro as well. Because I think it probably helps. I don't think it can hurt having a good intro. So it probably does. Happen. I think it's just it's just like TV. It's, you find people copying each other quite quite quickly because it's something. It's something that you kind of identify with. So, like, if you have a short thing because Lost is really big, everyone's going to go with that because they think, you know, I may not be able to do Lost, but at least, you know, I can get that short thing, that short title sequence at the beginning. And now, because everyone's, like, having good, like, good, like, opening title sequences, everyone else is just jumping on the bandwagon. Sooner or later, you'll come back and someone will just do... There won't be title sequences (laughs) for some strange reason. Yeah, maybe... I don't know. I think I think it's a kind of a good version of marketing for them, because, like I say, I've been humming the the Game of Thrones theme tune uh, on mm. North when it's it's been like six months from airing and all that. Um, so that's that's keeping that still in people's brains and making sure that they remember to go back and watch it. Yeah. Mm. Um, I've just I've just seen another cracker the um, American Horror Story. Every season, yeah, that... something they do absolutely perfect. <laughs> it's so creepy. <laughs> uh, what are they going to do for the next one? Uh, it's the is it carnival? It's carnival, yeah. yeah. Uh, that's going to be really. I'm not going to be able to watch that with all the clowns and shit like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, Adventure Time probably the best, the best uh, anime theme tune. Fuck the Simpsons. <laughs> so what are you talking about? What are you talking about? Pokemon. Pokemon's oh, the best one. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, one that I spoke about ages ago, actually, I think I used it for maybe it was an outro. Uh, that Attack on Titan, that's a great, great theme tune as well. Um, I think I think it's like Japanese German metal stars or something like that that sing it. Um, it's, it's really weird. It's like Japanese people singing in German. Oh, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's cool though. It's I'm sure I put it in one of the old podcasts. Um, so yeah, like like I say, I think it's a, a good version of marketing for them. I think it's uh, the guys who do that have a special talent um, alongside the guys who do uh, music for for uh, TV series are the ones who do it well um, like from uh, I knew the guy's name as well because he followed me on Twitter ages ago uh, when Entourage was still on but the guy who done Entourage's uh, soundtrack absolutely outstanding um, yeah Anything else to add? No, I think we've covered it well. Okay. Um, I think think that's uh, about time to move on to our next topic, uh, which was, uh, again, it ties in, sort of. Uh, 
Iconic movie scenes? Ah, oh, I said that really weird. Iconic movie scenes. Sorry, were, were you questioning? <laughs> yep, yeah, I'm going to have to leave that in. <laughs> um, yes, I, iconic movie scenes. <laughs> um, yeah, so when you when someone talks about a movie and there's a scene that just pops into your head that you every time you think about that movie, it's associated with it in your brain. Mines is the Godfather, uh, the communion. No, is it, no christening scene. Um, hmm. When it's like the the priest doing the whole um, do you renounce him thing, and the guys are uh, getting getting killed. Spoiler alert for the Godfather: it's like 30, <laughs> 40 years old. Um, if you haven't watched it now, then fuck you. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, this, this is a very a very uh, explicit tagged podcast. Uh, David's usually here to keep me from uh, <laughs> going off a bit. Um, the yeah, the uh, him, yeah, is that what makes <laughs> that, That's exactly what it is. Yeah, um, bad day at work as well. <laughs> just, just makes gets me a little bit riled up. Um, yeah, Godfather for me when they're doing the kill. Didn't they? And they did a. They did a homage to that in a Modern Family, didn't they? Did they? In one of, I think so. It oh, was, um, so they did, so they did, and it was um, yeah. Bill Dunphy. Yeah, it was Dunphy and um, and the little one as well. Yeah. Was it Luke? Yeah, yeah, I think so. <laughs> um, oh, but see, the, there's a lot of kind of little references to that. Um, I remember in Boardwalk Empire as well, there was one. Hmm. Um, I think maybe the end of season one, season two, um, when they do the similar thing and it kind of I think it's like a wee kind of uh, choir singing over it or something like that. Okay. And they're, uh, they're just getting rid of everyone. It's really... Uh, again, that's the first thing. As soon as I've seen that, Godfather popped into my head. Um, what about you guys? What are, what are your, your kind of memory links to different movies and their their main scenes? Um, I, 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 when you guys first said this, the first thing that popped into my head was... Um, Strangely, who framed Roger Rabbit? Because uh, as a kid, that um, the bit where with with the reveal of Christopher Lloyd being the bad guy, yeah, absolutely freaked me out. <laughs> kid, like the the animated eyes popping out of his head, and yeah, and the voice like he just becomes a screechy voice that used to scare me yeah. so mm. much as a child. And it seemed like the the whole thing's quite child friendly. Like I don't know. I used to watch it and I used to be entertained by it, but as soon as that came on, I like had to look away or, or at least mute it because it's just the voice. Oh, I can hear it in my head now. <laughs> uh, yeah, that. And um, probably the first saw. Um, the bear trap? No. No? The, oh. the reveal at the end, just with the, the soundtrack going up and then the guy standing up from like, thing yeah the guy standing up from the from the floor just like and then just that feeling of the first time you've watched it and just the oh my god like i didn't like i didn't see that coming that 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 is a good scene as well actually um i'm just thinking the bear trap's not even in so when is it so too is it yeah is that the one with the head yeah it's like the reverse yeah yeah Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that that is that's some sick shit (laughs) and um star wars empire how can you not Bring up iconic scenes and bring up well, which Empire's... one? No, <laughs> that's like <laughs> no, a million to choose from. The, the the reveal of um, Vader has to be. Uh, yeah, agreed. Yes, that is an iconic. An Empire, scene. not the carbonate. No, no, no. Just the just yeah. the Vader revealing his. I, I, I guess the... so. I guess so. That's that's the line that you associate with Star Wars, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh-huh. maybe it's just, about stuff. just Mark Hamill. No, I was just gonna say, if you, like speaking about like other things, kind of copying it, the amount of kind of you know other stuff that's kind of used in a pop culture of like that, the whole Vader reveal thing, it probably shows how iconic it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess you're right. Um, and just Hamill's reaction as well. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Uh, I remember seeing a great video. Um, pretty unrelated. <laughs> But it was someone doing. Uh, it was on a, a, another podcast, uh, not a rival anymore because it's finished. Uh, the Internet Box podcast, 
Um, and one of the guys could recite every single line that Anakin Skywalker says in Star Wars Episode 3. <laughs> and someone had dubbed a video uh, of uh, all like, the the last Anakin Skywalker scene with him dubbed over it, and it's the funniest fucking thing I've ever seen. <laughs> uh, it's, it's just amazing. Um, I'll, I'll put that in the link dump as well. That's, that's a really good watch. Uh, I'll send you guys it in the Skype chat afterwards so you can yeah. so you can get cool. an early look. <laughs> um, uh, I can't, uh, those, oh. those are all off the top of my head. Those are the only ones I can really think of at the moment. So yeah, I don't I don't even have a big stack of DVDs in front of me to yeah. to go through a few of them. Well, I think like for me. I don't know if it, well, it is an iconic film, but whenever it gets to Christmas, you just automatically think Home Alone. And there's just so many <laughs> bits from Home Alone that you could think of. It just makes it feel like Christmas. That's and then, a fair share as well. And uh, I was watching a program the other day of great Disney moments in Lion King, the kind of circle of life, but at the start, oh, I being a kid, I'm yeah. watching that, and like when the sun comes up in the song, which I'm not going to sing. Um, <laughs> it's just, it's incredible. I'm still like, even now, you kind of think about it and you're like, it's just an incredible kind of opening. That's something that you think, you'd think uh, Disney would have a lot more of, is like, things like that, but when you think of like, uh, Beauty and the Beast, Snow White, Cinderella, there's not a lot of, like, oh, no, Snow White's a bit. screenshots that. Um, that you can, like mental screenshots. It's mental supposed, screenshots yeah. that you can have. It's supposed to be in the Beast, you'd have the dance when they're in the ballroom, and yeah, uh, there's a tale, uh, tale as old as time. It's quite a. Uh, See that? Snow that's more than the full song, though, isn't it? That's rather, <coughs> yeah, rather it's, than it's the, the movie. Snow White, you can go with the the transformation of the Wicked Witch into like into like the the woman, the old woman mm. with the apple or something like Melissa Melif- Melissa Is that her name? No, nah, sleeping baby. Turning oh uh, the one uh, basically the witch, the Wicked Witch turning into the old woman. That's quite. Thinking about that now, it's, that was quite scary as a child. It's really dark as well. Yeah. Um. But I mean, other than oh, well, Aladdin, Aladdin's got a few kind of uh, big moments. The, the magic carpet ride uh, when he's yeah. got the the robes on and all that. That's like one of the the big ones. I, I think that's I suppose with the song as well, actually, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I think so. Yeah. Uh, I see. It's more. It's more with the the music with him um, rather than. Like think of the movie and you automatically think of that scene. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, it's something I get a little bit better with, though. I, would, I guess. Um, no, it's not because they're, they're going back to that. They're going back to the song thing um, with Frozen. Yes. As soon as yeah. you think of Frozen, you think of. Uh, Let it go. Let it go. Yeah. Yeah. True. I suppose with Up, you've got the bit when the balloons all come out. That's I don't want really to call it an iconic scene, I suppose. Though, but is that a Disney um, movie? I thought that was uh, DreamWorks. No, it's Disney. Is it? Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not too up on my, my animated films. The best um, type of films. <laughs> South Park, Bigger, Longer, Uncut. That, that's, oh. um, there's, there's a few oh. in that. The La Resistance and... That's uh, Uncle Funko. Terry's involved in the, the <laughs> uh, dance and fart thing. Um, and Saddam Hussein and Satan in bed. That, that's that's like one of the, the main <laughs> ones for me from that. Which I, I don't want to touch on that. Maybe next week uh, I'm going to try and get Kate Milner on and we're going to talk about some musicals that we like. Uh, that's going to be mine. Spoiler. <laughs> um, it may not be actually. I really like musicals. Oh, that's, a, that's a discussion for another day. Bullet Time. The first time we saw The Matrix and you saw Bullet Time. That was quite iconic. Do, and do you know I think everyone, that's a great show I, as well. I think everyone kind of takes it for granted now. But yeah. Yeah. When that first showed up, everyone was just like, this is so good. <laughs> I, I remember, actually, I'd done that, uh, the bullet time back bend thing when I, when I was in <laughs> primary school. Um, <laughs> someone threw a tiny bottle of Iron Brew at me, and I'd done that to dodge it, and then I fell on my arse. <laughs> uh, it, it was a great dodge, though, and uh, I, will, I will always remember that. So uh, that, That's the link for me, is Matrix, bullet time, tiny bottle of Iron Brew, wet arse. <laughs> <laughs> the, Jerry Maguire. Ah, uh, show me the money. <laughs> See, that's all you have to say, Jerry Maguire. And we'll go straight to it. Uh, <laughs> uh, the um, uh, the oh, what's it called? Every, uh, any given Sunday with the Al Pacino speech. 
Mm. Um, I mean, there's guys that apparently play that in locker rooms before matches still. I don't know how it still works. It's a good speech, but surely you get bored of it after a week. <laughs> um, that, that's a, in fact, I imagine Al Pacino's got a, a hell of a lot of them. Mm. You, th- you think it has, like, I mean, what was the one from Friends that uh, Joey does? How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> no, I was like, what? No. <laughs> uh, what is it? You're out of order. Pah! This whole courtroom's out of order. Something like that. <laughs> Um, oh, I was saying that. It's the other one. Um, that's from... A Few Good Men. Is it A Few Good Men? A Few Good Men as well. No, it's not from A Few Good Men, but no. you just saying that just reminded me uh, of A yeah. Few Good Men. Is that... You can't yeah. handle the truth! That's... Ah, uh, yeah, that's another one. See, Al Pacino's great for them. Uh, did any of you ever see that film that he done with uh, Lisa Kudrow? Is it Analyze This? That, was, that wasn't Al Pacino, was it? Um, no. Was that not Billy Crystal? Yeah. Was it? It was um, Jack Nicholson, wasn't it? Really? Was Jack Nicholson in that? I'm sure. I'm going to look it up. Lisa Kudrow. Yep. Boys to wheel. All went to IMDb. Um, analyze this. Oh, Robert De Niro is that I'm thinking of that was in Analyze This. Oh. Uh... I realised that was <laughs> was uh, Al Pacino in that. Maybe oh, not. Maybe yeah. I'm talking shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was a real good moment. iconic film moment there. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so much so. Uh, you didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> I've not seen it in like ten years. So. <laughs> um, so last thing, uh, that, that uh, I, I couldn't come up with a good link there. I'll try again. So I think I think that's enough uh, discussion over our iconic movie scenes. Um, how about we talk about some latest news stories? Oh, always a good roundup and a, a good marker of when we're running a little bit short. <laughs> um, I stupidly didn't have the latest news stories tab up, uh, but we we're talking about one earlier on. It was oh fuck, there's another one. Reservoir Dogs. <laughs> <laughs> Reservoir Dogs with a doom. Oh no, I wasn't thinking of that for Reservoir Dogs, I was just thinking about the ear. Ah! Oh, God, ah! <laughs> no, it's, it's still the walk for me. The, the walk is the the big thing. Um, and, and that, I think Liam, all... Liam, you've got you to bring it in and see who's the winner. Which one do you think of more? I don't know, I've never seen oh, Reservoir Dogs. dogs. Oh, oh my god! <laughs> did, you, did you not read Stuart's review? The no, no, classic no. review that went up yesterday? You have to go and read it and see how good it is. Okay. No, in fact, maybe don't. Maybe it might be spoiler. Just watch the film. I, but, uh, I think I'd rather the, watch the, walk, the film than read that review. Not the walk or the... Ahem. Uh, 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 um, uh, um. <laughs> okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take a quick break. Liam, you're going to go watch the film. <laughs> and uh, tell us who's on is right. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, just remember the walk in the ear, and you'll you'll know which bits we're talking about. Um, plus, I've done the song, so clearly mine's is going to win. Rick, you're going to, you're going to have to sing stuck in the middle if you want to win. Oh, no. <laughs> you you win you win. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so now I think we can move on. Um, and talk about some of our recent news stories that have come up, uh, or some of the maybe some of the recent articles that we've done on the site. Um. I'm just opening the, <laughs> the latest news story, sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, we were talking about it beforehand. Um, Liam, you wrote about X-Men Apocalypse getting yeah. a... Uh, was it the cast were confirmed for it with uh, Jennifer Lawrence and Michael Fassbender? Yes, they've confirmed to be in it. Uh, what, what do you think? Is uh, uh, Did you like those two enough from the Future Past to, to see more of them? Uh, just first class. I was going to say, I don't know about Days of Future Past, yeah. I've not seen it yet, but <laughs> First Class. Oh, what am I talking about? What was the first one? First Class. First Class, first class yeah, sorry. sorry. Uh, yeah, I think they were they were good enough in it. Um, I'm not a huge fan of Michael Fassbender, but it was a good magnet. Oh, really? Um, but I think like we were talking about kind of before the podcast, it kind of seems to be maybe give a hint of where they're going in Days of Future Past. Like, Yeah. I think so. I've read the... Because the next one's, what, Apocalypse, right? Yeah. And I've kind of... 
Like that was like the first major comic book kind of event that I read when I was younger. And if you've read it, you kind of know if that's where they're going to go in the next film. You kind of know what's going to happen towards the end of this one. I think. I don't really want to spoil it. So. I'm going to say I, I don't <laughs> remember um, where it went. I think uh, is that with the uh, Sentinels. No, that's oh. Days of Future Past. Um, Apocalypse is like, it's like an alt. Uh, Apocalypse is like Age of Apocalypse is where they get rid of uh, Xavier and. Magneto takes over the X-Men. Oh, nice. So, especially with, especially as you just said, the only people who are cast so far are Jennifer Lawrence and 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 um, Fassbender and not McAvoy. Oh, no, uh, Mac- I'm, just, I'm actually McAvoy just looking at a new story. Uh, McAvoy and oh, Nicholas Holt are yeah. both... Uh, okay. Both N- Nicholas Holt is um, the guy East. from About a Boy, isn't he? Yeah. yeah. He's from Skins. <laughs> yeah, he's that little fat chubby uh, boy from About a Boy. Who's, uh, who's he in X-Men? I can't East. think. He's beast. beast. Oh, oh so he's he is. A... Oh, God. Yeah. I never even recognised him. Yeah, see, now that you've said it, it's just that it clicks on. It's because he's all blue. Yeah, I suppose so. <laughs> oh, so, so is Jennifer Lawrence. I knew it was her. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, do you know, I'm going to be controversial here. I didn't really like Jennifer Lawrence's mystique. Mm. I didn't think she was that good. Um, Maybe maybe it's just because... Uh, if, was it her that done it in X-Men 2? No, it's Rebecca... Rebecca Ramos, Ram Ramjos. I thought I name. thought she was uh, she was a better mystique. Mm. Um, I, she had more to do though, didn't she? Um, she had I, more fight scenes and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah I guess say. so. Maybe, maybe that's why. Maybe it's just uh, a few more spectacles. Mm. Um, but yeah, uh, like I said, we we're we we're talking about it before, and uh, I, I brought up that mystique and Gambit might be getting their own. Kind of spin-off movies, like their own Origins movies. Has Gambit um, been in the movies? Have I just forgot? Gambit was, was in... in uh, Wolverine. Yeah, Wasn't Wolverine Origin. Yeah. Oh, I've not seen that one. Yeah. Um, it's, not, it's not a good film. <laughs> don't, don't watch <laughs> it. Because they had Deadpool in it as well, I think. Yeah, and was uh, Deadpool was awful. It was nothing like Deadpool. <laughs> Gambit, was like my, Gambit was like my favourite character from the comics yeah, when I was a kid. Yeah, same here. And it wasn't, it wasn't what I expected. <laughs> Yeah, it was it was very underplayed, and um, yeah, he should. He, I'm I'm really looking forward. Um, do you know what? I I didn't think uh, Tim Riggins done a, a Tim Riggins. Fuck, that's not his actual name. That's his uh, Friday Night Lights name. Um, I, Taylor I don't, Lish. Ta- uh, Taylor, Taylor Ke- Kitch. Kitch, yeah, Kitch, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I actually what? thought he'd done an, an okay job. Fucking Tim Riggins, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> um, as as Gambit for what he had to do, I think it was just poorly written. Because I, I can see him as like a um, a gambit. Who is it they? Uh, who was it they were thinking of casting to begin with? I think it was um, a guy from Lost, right? Uh, that was who they were thinking of casting. Um, what, Sawyer. Yeah. Oh God, no, no, I wouldn't like him. I as, think uh, he could pull it off. He's too. Yeah. I think he's too big. I think I always picture Gambit as a kind of smaller guy. I know Tim Riggins is quite a big guy, but uh, I'm just going to call him Tim Riggins. I'm not going to go for Taylor Kitsch every time. Um, I, I was, yeah, but, I, I never picture him as a, a like a big guy. You know, he looks kind of medium height. Yeah, um, but you can say the same about um, what's his name as um, Logan as Wolverine because I always pictured Wolverine being like really quite small. But uh, Hugh, Jack Hugh Jackman's is actually quite tall. Has he? Huh? I, th- I thought he was yeah. only like five eight or something. Oh. He, well, Stacked heels, maybe. What, well, sorry, watching it on the, watching it in the cinema, everyone looks tall. So. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, only like uh, chat shows and things like that doesn't look like a, like a massive guy. Yeah. Um, but no, nah, I can't. I couldn't see Sawyer. Um, uh, I forget his name as well. I really like him as well. Uh, Josh Holloway. 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 Yeah. Um, like he looks too kind of lanky. Do you know what I mean? He doesn't look like a like a big built guy. Um, because that that would that would be fine. Um, kind of <laughs> Tim Reagan's mold. <laughs> um, I, I need to stop doing that. I need to stop it. Um, what about Mystique? Um, do you do you think she's worthy of an origin story? I think it's. Didn't they kind of cover that. Well, yeah, and plus, I, yeah, I think I it's not yeah, Jennifer. Is it surely not more because Jennifer, Jennifer Lawrence, Lawrence or like origin story? <laughs> uh, probably. Yeah. She needs to slow down. Come on, she says so much. She's gonna get overexposed so quickly. Yeah. People yeah. are gonna get tired. So. 
Oh, she's got the blue suit on, so maybe not. <laughs> um, I, I didn't like the stuff where she didn't have the blue suit, or like when she changed into a person for uh, James when McAvoy and uh, <laughs> yeah, you didn't like the bits where she was Jennifer Lawrence. Yeah, pretty much. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I thought that was just. It felt like uh, Sylvester Stallone taking off the George Dredd helmet. Do you know what I mean? Uh, like, yeah. just try to get her face onto the yeah. picture. Um, but yeah, big X Men fan, so I'm I'm quite looking forward to seeing how Days of Future Past goes first and uh, how First Class went, um, <laughs> and how Apocalypse is going to shape up. Um, a, a couple other. Uh, oh, wait a minute! I should check the time. Yeah, still got plenty of time. Um, a couple other articles that we've done this week that I want to bring up, uh, try and get a little bit more exposure. Everyone who's listening has probably already read them. Um, since they're our most loyal fans and we love you so much. Uh, you, we've got the results of the Top 50 Most Beautiful Women on US TV. Uh, David's put them up today. Um, so you can go and check them out on the site. I'm not going to spoil it. Uh, but in fact, I need to spoil it for myself. I've not seen it yet. I just realised it was up there. I, I was uh, surprised who was number one. I was surprised as well. Uh, I am also surprised who's number one. I'm really surprised who's number two, actually. Um, yeah, yeah I, I didn't realise she was uh, going to be that high. Number four was who I voted for for the final. Okay. Um, hmm. bit, of, bit of an underdog there. I want to see where my, my tip for the start finished. Uh, this... Alexandra Daddario. Uh she got to number forty one from True Detective and New Girl and Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Uh she's super hot. She's my favourite by far. But harsh on no okay, I'm not gonna give any more away. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you can see how good I read it as a live uh, live reaction to it. <laughs> um, these are all these are all live tweets. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a, a couple of mine that have uh, gone up as well. Uh, one that I had so so much fun with um, top 5 fake superhero theme songs uh, I couldn't find a better title it's the worst title in the world um, I actually had about 5 ones that were worse before it um, but I, I had I had a lot of fun putting this together it's it's a really short article um, just going through a few kind of alter egos uh, from different series most of them cartoons uh, as you'd imagine but uh, you'll be able to um, jump on and have a wee read through some of them. It's actually been really popular. I've just seen. Uh, I'm really, I'm really glad that it has been because um, I was. I, one. I put it, <laughs> I put it up at like two in the morning, and I was worried that nobody was going to see it. <laughs> um, so I'm on with number one. Number one's a great shout. <laughs> <laughs> um, my favourite one was the uh, the new dust. Eh, bleh, bleh. New Justice team from Futurama. It's uh, mm-hmm. one of those iconic scenes that we were talking about before. Um, and I, I might use that as the outro, actually, now that I think of it. But it's, <laughs> it's a really good one. Um, I, I, but I was running I was running really, really low on gas, and uh, I actually put Mr. Plough in there. <laughs> Call Mr. Plough, that's my name, that name again <laughs> is Mr. Plough. So I just had to fill time there to find the next one. Uh, another one of mine that I've done before it was the power rankings, which I mentioned earlier. Um, and I'll, I'll get the votes and all that. But, um, uh, yeah, so you can get involved on Twitter if you tweet with the hashtag TVFR Power Rankings. Um, I'm going to put a wee poll up on Facebook as well. Uh, everyone can add in their their own choice for uh, what they want to see on the list. Uh, and obviously the ones with the most votes will we'll add it up with uh, our editors uh, writers and editors votes and uh, put put the, the list together for, like I said, Wednesday will probably be up um, and I'll, I'll tell you what uh, our TV writer Nora um, done a, an awesome article um, that I had to read that yesterday it's uh, from must see to must not watch, which Rivals my uh, top fa- uh, top five fake superhero theme songs for the worst title ever, <laughs> but it's it's a great article. It is, um, it is a good article. Another one people have responded to really well, um, and it's again it's similar to what we're talking about the iconic stuff. Is uh, when you hear about 
what show started off amazing and just ended up garbage. Uh, loads of them just popped into my head, and it was it was good to see some of them on the list. Um, I think I probably agree with most of our list, to be honest. There was one that she missed out that she's probably just not watched. Uh, Heroes. Yes. Oh, okay. Heroes was the first one that popped into my head. Um, I think did she put Lost on it? No, she not, said not that to ruin that. the list or anything, but she, she, that... she put that from most improved. Oh, which I wouldn't agree with, but hmm. Hmm. Nah, the, the put... early seasons of Lost were much better. Yeah. I put from my one. I put the OC. The OC went from really quite good to really really bad. Yeah, that's that a good show as well. That, yeah. That's a good show. Um, I don't know if that's just the genre that does that though. Hmm. That kind of teen drama, which oh, I got I got a lot of stick for calling uh, Arrow a teen drama because it was in the CW. <laughs> well, I, I to be fair, I agree with that guy. I don't, I wouldn't necessarily call it teen drama, but I can see why you did because it's on the CW. Yeah, and the yeah, writing, I mean, the writing is exactly amazing kind of, on it. To be fair. Um, hmm. okay, if, if I put Arrow in next week, then uh. I, I won't uh, do the right up. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll let someone else do it. Um, the the guy commenting that you were talking about is uh, actually my friend uh, Thomas, uh, Mister Wartburg on uh, everything. I think <laughs> I think he's Mister <laughs> Wartburg on Twitter and on the Rooster Teeth website. Uh, so you can you can go and follow him there if you're listening. Uh, good guy, good chat. Um, and. Reservoir Dogs review that uh, Stuart done a little while ago. We're going to get Stuart on next week, I hope, uh, because there's lots and lots of stuff that I want to talk to him about that I've had to keep putting off for uh, for about five weeks. So, um, yeah, I, I want to want to bring up a, a few things with him, and uh, we'll get him on next week to chat in the podcast with us. Um, also, check out our mini casts on YouTube. Um, we started them la- uh, last night, in fact. Um, Liam, you starred in the first one with I David. I did indeed, yes. Do you want to tell us a little bit about them? Uh, it was just really me and David talking about Britain's Got Talent that started last night, so just giving our opinion on the acts, and who got through, who didn't get through, what we thought. Um, so yeah, it's, you should check it out. It's only about eight minutes long, I think, so it's not very long, it's not going to take up much of your time, so you should definitely check it out. Yeah, um, YouTube fucked us over, so they can't actually be any longer than 15 minutes, so... And David <laughs> uh, said it was we'll, 10, we'll make so sure like won't. rushing through them. Oh, God. Um, but yeah, it's something new we're trying out. Um, just a few little uh, short chats on one topic. Uh, just going straight on our YouTube channel. Um, so it's, it's uh, a bit more relevant than what the podcast material is. Um, I think next week he is going to be featuring... I think it's a wrestling themed. Uh, oh, I want to get him. <laughs> I'll see what I can do. I think he's already got a guest, and he's only doing a kind of one-on-one uh, type thing for him. What we do, um, but yeah, uh, make sure you tune in for that if you're a if you're a WWF fan. Um, WWE, come on! Man. Oh, <laughs> it shows you how long I've uh, how long I've not watched it. It was it was WWE when I stopped watching it, so no excuses. Um, I mean that that could be like the the panda one, panda fighting. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah, I, I think that's that's enough to close us up. Unless there's anything you guys want to bring up no. before we go. No. No, I'm good. I'm good to stop on panda fighting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Shout out to Michael Vick. Um. So yeah, thank you very much for listening this week. Uh, we'll be back next week with uh, more people, more content. Um, we won't be struggling to make an hour. <laughs> um, a little less rambly. Yeah, maybe. No, yeah. I'm just to be rambly. That's the whole point. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Google Plus. If you give, uh, oh, I always mess it up. <laughs> I always mess the fucking plug up. Um, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Google Plus. If you just search TV and film review, uh, on YouTube.com. If you search fuck <laughs> <laughs> I'm so bad I'm so bad at this don't search fuck <laughs> <laughs> um, youtube.com slash tv and film reviews with an S um, you can get us on iTunes if you just search TVFR uh, you're probably already, already listening uh, but if not then go do that 
we need the need the subscribers. It makes us look good. And uh, I've not got it here, but we you can get us on Stitcher now as well if you don't use uh, iTunes, if you use uh, Android devices. Um, Stitcher's a, a superb app. Uh, works on most mobile devices. Um, and it's a great source for all your all your podcasting needs. Um, and yeah, thank you very much to Liam, who is at underscore. Oh, it's not underscore Chris. No, no, Chris no. underscore. I get I get mixed up with Kate's one because she she made me do the un, at underscore culture mouse, um, which is getting cut. She doesn't deserve a plug. She wasn't on this episode. <laughs> um, at Chris underscore packet for yeah. Liam. Indeed. And uh, Ricky, who has like 17 million Twitter tags. Oh, well, you know. Uh, which one is it you're using for this? Ricky Reviews. At Ricky Reviews uh, for Ricky on Twitter. And you can grab me on at the Stew Dog, S T E W. Um, th- that's the, the other S T U is the other Stuart. Uh, he's not as good. And uh, you can get the podcast at TVFR Podcast, I think. And uh, at TV and Film Review. Oh, too many to put tags. We need to cut that down. <laughs> <laughs> Sack the main site. Um, so yeah, if you want to follow us on Twitter and see when the, the new episode is up, uh, obviously we'll, we'll update the Facebook page and the website and everything with the, the new one as well. Um, well. I'll also be putting it on YouTube as well if you want to listen to it. So uh, go there and subscribe to us. Um, yeah, and that wraps us up for this week. Uh, thanks very much guys for coming on and thank you again for listening guys bye 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 Also, he is from the past, not just fast, but from the past, Captain Yesterday. Super King has all the powers of a king, plus all the powers of Superman. Also, he's a robot, ain't it cool? Super King, you rule! Clavarella beats you up, Clavarella beats you up, who does she beat up? You! Clavarella! Citizens, never fear. Crazy, do good freaks are here until they.